guys, it's Nadia from the ID Designs and I'm back with another Inspiration Fundamentals video. Uh, today we're testing flowers. So as many of you know who've seen my previous flower video, I've kind of got the basics figured out for flowers of how um, uh, in the technique that I was teaching before and I decided I want to try some other types of flowers or just other ways of pouring flowers and see what results I get. So um, as you can tell, this is a part one video because I am doing another one as well. But to start, what I did is I uh, mixed up my one-to-one -one resin from Crystal Resin, and then I filled these molds about halfway. So these have about two ounces or so of, of resin in each one. And I'm just using my heat gun here to take out all the bubbles. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to be adding glitter. So I poured a little bit of glitter in some resin that I also mixed up at the same time and then I'm just going to add it to the edges. So again, this is just a little bit of, of glitter to um, just get a bit of sparkle on the edges here. And, um, and then I'm going to, once I finish doing this, I'm going to um, heat it up a little bit and leave it to sit. So I'm going to leave it to sit for about 30 minutes in this case. And again, if you guys um, haven't already seen it, I do have a video on my channel that's called Timing Your Resin. So again, if you're not sure exactly how long you should be waiting for your resin to get to the viscosity um, that you need to make flowers, check out that video because I show you how to test your resin to um, kind of time it and figure it out so that um, you know exactly or get a good idea of um, how long you need to wait or if you need to wait at all for your resin. So um, before you can start making certain techniques like these flowers. So again, I am finishing up the glitter here and then I'm going to let it sit um, after I heat up a um, little bit of extra bubbles. I'm going to let it sit for about 30 minutes. And the way I check that is I put my popsicle stick um, in the resin just to kind of see if it was about the viscosity that I needed. Okay, so now I'm just adding in some gold, some rose gold foil actually from DB Products. Um, and again, this is just to add a little bit of interest and color and sparkle to the centers. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that in with my popsicle stick and kind of try to, you know, um, push it down as far as I can because uh, foil tends to have a tendency to want to rise up and kind of float near the top. So I'm just pushing it down as much as I can. Um, so once I'm done that, then I'm going to, <laughs> as these fly away on me, I'm going to go ahead and um, start adding the pigmented resin in the designs. I put the resin in, the pigmented resin in uh, little Ziploc bags and I cut a hole, um, a really tiny hole in one of the corners. Uh, the I use pigment paste in, for these ones here from Lorez Expressions. So I used a white and I used a kind of metallic pink color. So um, I went, so again, for this first one, what I'm doing is I'm just literally doing a spiral um, with both colors. And then I did the same thing with the second one as well. Um, but I'm going to go back in, uh, you're going to see in a second, and actually um, add some detail with a very fine paintbrush to the first one just because I wanted to test these out and do something different in each coaster mold so this way we can kind of see the difference of how they set so again you can see here I'm going in and I'm just um, adding in some lines with the paintbrush so nothing too fancy just some simple lines and we'll see how that changes the um, effect compared to the second one. I thought about doing it here on the second one as well, but then I changed my mind and decided not to. On the third one, I am just going to do kind of like a, a again, kind of a, a looped pattern around, um, typical flower type of formation. Um, and again, with the second color, do the same thing. Um, I've tried this type of style in the past and I've always had issues with little blobs that because we're everywhere that the resin crosses over itself um, in the loops, they tend to get, you know, gather a little bit and then sink down. I want to see if the same thing's going to happen here um, now that I've let the resin sit for 30 minutes to see if that um, is still an issue. So on the fourth one here, I am just going to do another kind of looped pattern, but the opposite direction. So instead of like a spirally 
um, pattern, kind of like a spirograph pattern. I'm doing it kind of the opposite way here. Again, kind of making that flower type of look, but um, again, just um, layering up the colors here. And I have the same concern here where I'm layering up that um, there's a lot of overlap, but we'll see how it turns out when it's done. Okay, time to unmold. So let's start um, from the last one that we did. And again, this was kind of the flower patterned one that we just kind of did a looped pattern. And yep, uh, exactly what I was worried about happened where everywhere that the uh, loops kind of crossed over themselves, they the resin kind of gathers and then sinks down um, to the bottom and then hides the flower pattern in between. And similar happened here to this one. So that's disappointing, but uh, I don't know, maybe I need to make, maybe if the coasters were thicker, uh, maybe that's what I do in the next test is I uh, try to have deeper coasters. Oh, this one turned out really cool. So this was a spiral one where we didn't do anything with the paintbrush and that turned out really neat. Not really flower-like, but really cool. And then the one where we did add um, the paintbrush lines in there, where we kind of moved the resin a bit. And wow, that one's beautiful. So, all right, so we have a winner, at least in my opinion. I really like this one. This is my favorite. So love this one. Think it turned out great. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.